1990, I, I bred a horse who I called Jodie, and um, right from the very beginning, she had lots of attitude. I remember when she, uh, well, I was brushing her in the paddock because I thought I had to desensitise her to things, and I was brushing her in the paddock, and um, after about five minutes, she decided that she'd had enough of that, so she turned her bum on me and sort of said, like, mm, you can go now, sort of thing, and I thought, oh, what do I do now? So I looked at my friend and I said, I don't know what to do. So I thought, oh, I know what I do. I had a, a sort of a, a, a sort of stick thing, so I just gave her a tap on the flank to let her know that I was the boss and she just turned round and looked at me like is that the best you can do? Basically she nearly killed me a couple of times and I was really quite scared about of her, very scared of her and she was a great big 17 hands just up there and you've had that with you. And so um, um, can I just share something with you? Did you see the way that all stepped into me when I said I was scared? Mm -hmm. So I ended up feeling totally out of my depth and I sent her away to um, several renowned horse trainers and she came back she came back more aggressive and more I was more scared of her. So through a friend of a friend I got introduced to Mel Richardson who was a really, really experienced natural horse person and I saw her, I came across her at a facility in Sussex and um, she asked me if I wanted to come and watch her work with her horse and she just, she just, she just blew me away. She, um, her horse was sort of asleep at the uh, other end of the paddock in the arena and she just sort of cracked her sort of carrot stick we call it and this horse just put its head up and like galloped towards her and stopped in front of her and was like what are we going to do now? And I went, oh my God, how did you do that? Well, first of all, she proceeded to show me how she's like danced with a horse. It was just amazing. And she started explaining to me how the horse uh, was going to be put down nine months earlier and that um, it was dangerous. And I thought, oh, I was so meant to meet you. And then I told her my story with Jodie and um, we just clicked and... And basically, I ended up taking my horse up to to her facility in Wales, and um, I spent the next sort of six to nine months up there with her. The real turning point came for me and changed my relationship with Jodie was one day Mel came out and she, she put a box down in the middle of the arena and she said, I want you to get Jodie to jump the box and I went, how do I do that? And she went, work it out. So I said, can I put the box against the fence? And she said, no. So I really got then it was about me having real control over Jodie's feet really good that when you walk up a horse, you walk up a horse, it's completely unlike a predator, it's like you zigzag up to them, you know, like this is good, you not even maybe look at them, but when they look at you, like if you look at me, it gives me two eyes and go, what are you up to, I stop, and then I just maybe take a step back, so I'm going to go around here, and I'm going to sort of start looking for some energy towards their bum, Okay, so I'm just moving her feet until she gets that so I've got control of her feet. Um, it's sort of 
So yes, and when I got it was about moving feet. I really, I really got that I had to line her up for the box. And I have to admit, it took me six hours to get her to jump the box. And this is when it was also raining and Mel lived on a really boggy bit of land. And so it was muddy and I'd fall, I'd slipped over and Jodie'd slipped over and we were both covered in mud. It looked like we'd been mud wrestling and oh, it was just, and, and Mel kept saying, do you want me to take over? And I'm going, no, I was really determined that I was not going to be beaten. And anyway, three hours into this session, um, Jodie came up to the box and she went bang like that and she smashed the box to smithereens. So we got another box out. Anyway, six hours later, Jodie jumped the box. And that was the d turning point in our relationship. She got that I was not going to be a pushover any longer and that I actually could move her feet where she wanted, where I wanted her feet to go. One of the uh, things we do at June Lakes Lodge is um, equine assisted learning and um, I've started an organisation called NZ Halo which stands for New Zealand's Horse Assisted Learning Organisation and we take um, children, mostly at risk children and take them through a, a voyage of self-discovery with, with using horses as a therapist if you like. I'm a youth worker with young offenders and uh, they're 14 to 17 year olds and we've brought them out here to this lovely place to work with the horses and they get so much out of working with these horses. It, it's, a, it's an interesting thing because I've designed activities for them and this has got to be in the three years that I've been working with people like this, this has to be the one activity where they actually stay focused for hours on end. So I don't have any idea how that works, you know, but it does. I came here through A Girl Called Hope, which is a home for girls that have been through some abuse and stuff. Um, when I first came here, I uh, was very angry, very raw, still hurting a lot. Um, not in control of my feelings very much, so just... just um, the horse is teaching me things that I wasn't allowing people to teach me. Um, yeah, it was huge, and, and, and it's actually, you know, you actually take it in more, because I didn't want to be told by no one what to do, but this 16-hand this horse just showed me in a loving way, because she loved on me. Um, she was a highly trained, ho trained horse, so she was quite a high energy, she was quite highly energised and so if you look at it on a scale she would sit at about an 8 and so I'd actually come into the arena and I'd actually be at an 8 so it would kind of clash and she would just play up kind of thing and I was wondering what I was doing wrong and then got mentioned about my energy and um, if she's an 8 I have to be able to, to control my own energy and bring it down to a 2 so we come at it up uh, together on an even level kind of thing so I was like oh man I can kind of take this home to my mum and so yeah I took it home and I'd consciously bring myself down nice and calm before I walked in the door kind of thing and um yeah and things just started getting better we started just getting each other a bit more and and having a bit more respect for one another and and that's a horse telling you teaching you these things this is a horse um you know a big animal that could hurt me more than any other other human being could. He yeah, kind of fell in love. Like I'd I'd go out in the paddock and I'd lie down on the ground and 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 that's a huge trust thing. Lie down on the ground and this huge horse would come up to me and she'd sniff me and lick me and bite my hat off and and just just spend time with me and stuff like she wanted to be in my presence. When a space is created for at risk, special needs and troubled youth. When a space was created for horses and them to come together, magic happens and profound healing takes place. This not only benefits young people, but it opens up the possibility for horses to live an extraordinary life when they are no longer needed as, or valued as riding horses.
Yeah. Well, if we're in a line and the yeah. horse suddenly takes off over here, one person could step out when the other person steps back. One of our New Zealand Halo programs includes corporate training and team building, and what we found is that our clients, how they act and react with horses is very similar to how they act in their everyday life. We've got 30 seconds. Remember, if, if you break any of the rules, you've got to do your consequences. So, how was that for you, Kerry? Part of it is the fact that we always feel that we need to achieve. It's like, if you don't achieve the task, then you fail. I, I did what you said with the touch and achieve, and then realised I was actually almost pushing him all the time, and I thought, no, I can actually pull back and lead him, which is also something I do anyway in my life. Mm. I just do this in life. I just went out there and I had no idea what I was going to do, and I just thought, I'll wing it. <laughs> so one of the things that I do here is um, natural horse, well, natural horsemanship is what integral part of Jean Lake's Lodge. And through my own journey of self-discovery with my own horse and the confidence that I gained from being able to handle this great big horse that, that was causing me so many issues, I do get a lot of people come to me you know, that have problems with their horses and, and I, I really get where they're coming from because that's the situation I was in, I don't know, 13 years ago. So um, it just, yeah, it just really... It's very fulfilling to be able to have the, 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 ho the owner and the horse get a relationship and a connection back again. Stand just in front of your horse like this, arms reach away. You put your finger up, you look really fierce, and you want the belly of the rope on the floor. Just hold it there, and then you just put your hands up like this, and you One of the things I love to share with people that horses aren't just solely for riding. Um, you can gain a, such a connection with horses when you understand a little bit of horse psychology and and just being with horses. It's a bit like swimming with dolphins. It's it's just magic happens. And um, one of the things we do here at June Lakes Lodge is actually encourage people to swim with horses, even though even if they've never ridden before. You can just get on horses back when you're in the water and this, you just feel the power and the connection with the horse and it's, it's truly magical and, and people are very moved by it. Being prey animals, horses are great mirrors um, for reading. They mirror and read predators. They've spent millions of years perfecting that for their survival. So, um, so it, it, it makes it a very um, valuable tool for a facilitator because if you can read what's going on for the horse, you can actually know what's going on for the person. Just a shout out, what, relates, what, issues, what horseshoes have you had when you've been having, you know, relationships with your family or friends or any of your partners, husbands? I very often hear people blame horses for what goes wrong and um, what, I, what I reflect back to the owner rider is that actually the horse is reflecting back something that's going on for them. So um, sometimes it's really hard for people to hear that because they actually have to take responsibility for who they're being in the relationship with their horse and, and that's very often reflects in other relationships in their life. Have the rope ready, don't walk backwards. You're telling him that he's the lead horse. Make him back off you. Hey, horse! Just out, 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 out! Right, so, because all the time you're going, 
Back off, Cisco. Back off, Cisco. And you're walking back. You're the one that's backing off. And you've got to think about what you're doing, sweetheart, because he's going, and you're going to say he's doing this. I'm in charge. I'm in charge. I'm in charge. See? He's winning. He's winning the games you're he's playing. He's playing games with you. So now we go. See, now he's going backwards. Now when I come round here, he won't be in the fight with me. Because he, he sees me as the lead horse now. Yes. That's it. Look at him, Fierce. Yeah, look at him. He knows back now what he wants it. Go on, get back to him. Yeah. Good. One of the most amazing experiences for people is when they get join up with, with a horse. Horses have been doing join up ever since they're born. So um, the dominant mare will drive the unruly colt out of the herd and the colt will run around the herd probably um, for about a quarter of a mile. After a quarter of a mile the horse, the, the, the horse has either been eaten or, or it survived. So that's when its brain starts to kick back in that it's actually still alive. So the horse will start to start to think about what's happening when it's been pushed out of the herd and it starts to think, oh, this isn't a very safe place to be. So it'll start to want to renegotiate with, with the dominant mare. He'll do that by um, flicking his ear towards her. He'll lower his head, he might lick and chew. but he, And that signs to her that he's actually wanting to re, renegotiate the, the deal. So when the dominant mare sees that the colt is um, willing to renegotiate, she'll actually turn away from him and um, stop driving towards him and uh, he'll come into her and um, which will allow join up to take place. When that happens on a horse human basis, it's really magical for the human, you know, for the horse to actually follow the human and be at one with it. It's like a synergy of energy is just amazing. I teach people to ride with their energy and their focus and their feel and what I've found is that bits really aren't necessary. Horses can feel a fly land on them and so they're really sensitive to um, everything that's in their environment so I've found that bits are actually so very detrimental to the horse's well-being. Yeah a lot of people come to me with problems with their horses and what I've found is that when you change over to bitless riding that the horse actually calms down and the rider calms down and then everything flows. So what happens with a bit in its, with the horse's mouth is that the, the throat is either open for air or open for eating and so when a, when a bit goes in the horse's mouth, the horse's brain says, I'm eating. So that's why it salivates and so what happens is that when, when a horse is galloping with a bit in its mouth, the, um, 
the throat area is trying to breathe and thinks it's going to eat. So what happens is that the saliva gets sucked down into the um, into the lungs and, and causes a, severe problems for the horse. My association with you know um, horses and everything was very much um, kind of force based and um, it's interesting like you've got gunshots over there and you know it's kind of quite <laughs> yeah it's like um, there's a lot of a aggression in the world and trying to make people do things and that happens in the horse world as well you know like pulling on the reins and you know um, bad horse and being angry and trying to get it to do stuff and being irritated with the horse and the horse is just being a horse you know what I really realized was by um, getting clear about what I wanted, not what I didn't want, then the horse would actually respond. Uh, and that's a really good lesson for life, you know, if we kind of keep on, you know, complaining and go, oh, it's not working for me, we just get more of what you don't want. But when you actually start to think, oh, I want to go this way, then actually everyone else wants to help you, and that's what I've experienced with the team, and I've experienced, you know, the horses, and every, everything comes together, and it's an amazing experience. I mean, it sounds, it sounds kind of, you know, very sort of hippie or whatever, but it really is about, you know, um, your intention and um, love, because when we come from love, things just get easier, and we come from um, control and um, frustration, uh, things just get more and more difficult. So. I guess that's the new paradigm is like letting go of control and, and fear and frustration and moving more towards uh, what, how I want it to work and how can, how can I make a connection. I'm aware that this is only the beginning of a new paradigm and horses wait with patience until we, in all our humanness, are ready to receive. From dream I wake, and there they are. The herd, my best loved friends. Beautiful, majestic and free. Running in harmony with the wind in their tails. Shaking the very ground on which I stand. Born free to roam. The sounds of their hooves drumming Mother Earth thunder rolling in from the west. Those magnificent horses, such breathtaking, enchanting, free spirits, with manes shining in the sun, shades of brown and grey turning red in the glowing sunset, their deep brown eyes that see into the very depths of my soul, willingly giving companionship, respect, trust. They run wild, gavord and jump as if to reach the celestial skies and beyond. The essence of beingness, patient beyond belief, always ready for play, living only for the moment, that they teach me those precious gifts. The horses are one day ride, bonding in friendship first then riding together only as companions, galloping across the earth with nothing on our minds and freedom in our hearts. The horse's legacy to connect me with heaven and my own footsteps.